It's the Pacific Northwest Geek here, Echo Kiro, and I'm, you know, fresh and clean, pretty much fresh out of the shower, and I want to talk to you about April Fool's Day. This 1986 slasher from Paramount Studios, weren't they, didn't they have a famous slasher series about a guy with a hockey mask? Hmm. What was the name of it again? Anyways, this movie, um, I haven't seen it in like over 25 years. Um, it actually could be longer than that. But um, somebody tweeted something about this a few weeks ago, and I said I hadn't seen it in a long time. And uh, they said, you know, hey, April Fool's is coming up. Might be the time to see it again. And I ended up going to Amazon and whew, found the collector's edition. It's got it comes with the sleeve, which is also uh, it's got uh, reverse cover, but I decided to use the um, cover that's pretty much because uh, you know reverse cover and stuff. But I decided to use this one because this is pretty much the the poster that I know. Now, this movie um, is actually was one like I said I saw it late eighties, early nineties, so it's been. It's been over like 25 years since so I've seen this movie. Um, I want to say that when I first got this, the uh, there's a song that's played in the credits that's actually played for the uh, the uh, Blu-ray menu. Um, I got some notes right here. So the song is called "Too Bad You're Crazy," which I have a link for uh, for it. Um, so I should put that in the description. By it's sung by Jerry Whitman. Whitman. It's actually pretty catchy. Now, in the 80s, there was a series of holiday or calendar theme movies. Quite a lot. Not just uh, Halloween and Friday the 13th. But there was, okay, we have Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, My Bloody Valentine, Trick or Treat, or Trick or Treats, uh, Don't Open Till Christmas, Silent Night, Deadly Night, which I do own a copy of, Trick or Treat, and Bloody New Year. Now... The cast and crew of this kind of might be familiar. Again, let me go here to my notes. It was directed by Fred Walton, who also directed both When a Stranger Calls and When a Stranger Calls Back. Uh, Danilo Bach was the writer who also wrote the story, not just the, write, the story for this, but the story for the original Beverly Hills Cop, which is a pretty cool movie. Uh, the producer was a guy named Frank, Frank Mancino Jr., who produced multiple Friday the 13th movies, Part 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, and the TV show. Plus, apparently he was the producer for the uh, late uh, 1980s sci-fi show, War of the Worlds. A show I would love to get on DVD or Blu-ray someday. It's pretty cool. I really got into that one. Its cast is Thomas F. Wall, uh, Wilson, best known as Biff from the Back to the Future movies. He also played, uh, I think, what his an, an ancestor of his. Uh, Amy... Still, who played Gina in the second Friday the 13th movie. Clayton uh, Rana, who was in Relic and other movies. Uh, I tend to forget his name, but his face is kind of one that some people might remember. Griffin O'Neill, who's the brother of Tatum O'Neill. I guess makes him the son of Ryan O'Neill. And Deborah Foreman, Feeman, who plays the uh, the Muffy character in this. One of the, the main one of the main leads in this. She was in Wax Waxwork. Now... There is a remake of this, but I keep forgetting about the remake. And the remake was, I think, straight to video 2007, 2008. And I keep forgetting that there is a remake of this. Um, the story is, is that a group of friends go to the friend Muffy's uh, little private island to have a little getaway. And I guess they're in college. And uh, there was an accident and some guy, a boat worker, is hurt. And nothing is the island one by one. They start getting offed. And um, eventually find out that Muffy has a quote unquote twin sister named Buffy. Buffy and Muffy. Oh, God. And it all basically climaxes with the final three is Buffy, because you find that apparently Muffy's dead, and it's Buffy, who has been in an insane asylum, has killed Muffy, and um, is taking the place and is trying to kill the last two. And only at the end to find that it was all a prank. There was, uh, you know, some, you know, kind of, I guess you could say red herrings with some of the stuff that went on. Um, exploring uh, 
cigar prank. Uh, there was a scene where someone gets stabbed. You find that it's a prank. So the whole thing is pranks. And at the end, you find that it's all a prank that Muffy doesn't have a sister. She has a brother, Skip, who was one of the victims, who's not really a victim. And that she wants to turn the place into like a kind of bed and, bef- bed and breakfast type place. Or get away from people with a little scary kind of horror th- theme where people can, you know, live uh, play out a murder mystery. Um, interesting twist in the end when, when I, uh, Gina still, I don't tell Gina, but Amy still comes in and sees everybody in there and everyone's just like, like there's nothing. And then her boyfriend's screaming, oh, I love you, baby, don't die. And then the guy who was supposed to be in the boat accident shows up and licks him and the face is like, oh, it's a prank. And it's kind of like, well, what the hell? Um, it's an interesting movie. Um, it's, it's horror and it is part of those calendar theme because there is and i have these here there's also i think there was uh birthday one um uh, my bloody birthday or happy birthday to you or happy birthday to me whatever there was graduation day so there was calendar themed movies in the names particularly uh what was going around uh and this was just one of them um i want to say after friday the 13th and when you started getting a lot of those let let's put horror in the name. Uh, I saw some documentary that said that, but technically, Halloween had the calendar name before Friday the 13th. And I believe there were some Christmas movies that kind of go in the same thing. Um, it is, okay, uh, put my glasses back on. Um, the movie is 88 minutes, which means it's an hour and 18 minutes. Um, from Paramount. Uh, this uh, collector's edition is from Scream Factory. Um, I got mine from Am- from uh, Amazon, so I'll definitely, besides the link for the, the that song, uh, Too Bad You're Crazy, which is an awesome song, um, I'll definitely put a link for this. I just have to go and find it. Um, you know, it is, you know, if you like 80 slashers with a unique twist ending, um, this is it. Again, there was there is a, a remake, but um, who Frank Messina Jr. is also the producer for. He also did Cool World and a whole bunch of others. Uh, he you know, sometimes in, in, in uh, documentaries about Friday Thirteenth, he'll pop up. I haven't always he always looks young whenever I see him pop up, so I don't know what he looks like these days. But um, well worth the see. Um, again. It's, Amy still uh, uh, was, again, she was in Friday the 13th, and she is the, technically, the final go in this, even though it's all a prank. Um, I totally didn't, I mean, I was looking at um, Thomas F. Wilson trying to remember, because I go, oh, I've seen him somewhere, I've seen him somewhere, and when I was looking up the cast for this, he goes, Biff, I went, ah, Back to the Future. He also played uh, Biff's Ancestor? And I think Biff's grandson. Um, so he was one of those characters besides Michael J. Fox, and um, who was in all the movies. There was the guy's name played Doc, Doc Doc Brown. Ooh, I'm gonna get shit with this one because I forgot his name. Sorry. Um, this is gonna actually gonna be my uh, uh, my April Fool's video, which I'm uploading on. I'm sorry, I'm taping this on the or recording this on the 25th, and so it's gonna be uploaded. On the first, because hey, you know, boom, well worth seeing. Good friends with some time to kill. Um, it's again, it's well worth seeing. Uh, apparently, my senior also brought a species. It says three of the Friday the 13th, but uh, actually, I think he did more than three of the Friday the 13th. He did quite a few of the Friday the 13th. Oh, he might have been. Uh, he's been an executive, he's been a producer, executive producer, associate producer. He's had something to do with those movies. Again, this is a, you know, something worth, worth seeing. It's, it's, it's a pretty cool movie. Um, I, you know what I have? Let me find this list. I have a list of what I call the dream horror movies. Horror dream list. This, uh, let's see. Oof. Yeah. Wasn't on the list of 
movies that was on my dream horror list, but I can't get any of the um, movies on my dream horror list right now because I have like 16 DVDs and Blu-rays um, to I need to get off my ass and watch. And so I put a embargo on you can't get any more DVDs and Blu-rays until you basically watch those. Um, again, check this out. Um, well worth it. It's just again, it's something completely different than the ending. Um, it's a an eighties classic, um, and well worth it. It actually, look at my list. I do have one of those holiday themed ones on my dream list, the original My Bloody Valentine. But anyways, I am Echo Kiro, and um, go ahead if you can. They actually on Shredder. Oh, they need to put this up and so people can watch it. And maybe someday I'll find the remake and check the remake out. Well, actually, I'll probably forget. I keep forgetting that's a remake. But anyways, I'm Echo Kiro with the bad hairdo. And I will see you on the flip side. And remember, good friends with some time to kill.